Hey, what's up, YouTube? Mark with the World's Okayest Farmer. Um, I got stopped by the DOT today for a spot check. Uh, he thought that I was maybe hauling over weight or something because my truck was sagging in the rear end, but I really wasn't. It was just a lot of tongue weight because I had a skid steer in that dump trailer. So, from that, uh, I had a lot of questions for him and he explained a lot of things to me and there's a few things that I uh, was not compliant with. Um, I don't know if I'm getting a ticket in the mail or not, but uh, I want to tell you what I learned from him. Uh, hopefully the wind's not too bad, uh, there's some more weather coming in, but uh, I just I got a wealth of information from him that I had questions. I know a lot of people on the internet have questions. I've Google searched it. I've looked at the, the Pennsylvania State Police website. I've looked at DOT websites. And the information, like even the officer said, is clear as mud. So we went over a bunch of things. He gave me his phone number. He said, yeah, I can call him anytime. He even said, you know, invite him out to my place. He'll inspect my two dump trucks, my pickup the trailers, everything. He'll look at all my stuff, tell me the findings so I can get everything corrected. And you know, better than him finding it on the road and I'm getting, paying the state more money that I don't have. Um, I'm really getting fed up with paying the state taxes. Uh, registrations, inspections, every time I buy a piece of equipment, I have to pay the state. Um, I pay the state too much money. And then, then you get the, um, the troopers and then they get more state money so he's a federal officer but he gets paid by the state police also it's like an 80 20 i think that's how he explained it to me because federal federal the rules are this dot is federal it's across the board and then the state has local laws that can be more strict than the federal laws so the stuff that I'm telling you is going to be general. Um, it's probably going to be similar across the board, but the um, this your state that you're in could have more strict rules on some things. Where I can tell you a couple things, for example. So I want to get into it. There's going to be a lot of information in this video. It's not the law. Um, it's not going to stand in court or anything like that. It's just things that me and this officer talked about. And there's a lot, a lot of information. So, oh, there's so much to cover, I don't even know where to begin. But, we'll talk about my trailers. I have two 14,000 GVW trailers. Uh, actually, all three of those are 14,000 GVW. And it's fine, I can pull them. Um, I've been told by people that I know that everybody has a little bit of knowledge, but it's not the right knowledge. I've been told that you can't pull a trailer that is registered over 10,000 GVW because uh, if you look at the CDL requirements, it says in there if you're pulling a trailer over 10,000 pounds, it's required that you have your Class A CDL. I kind of thought that too. He straightened me out today. I was perfectly legal pulling that 14,000 GVW trailer. Why was I legal? Because all right, there's so much information here. Um, my truck, GVWs say 9,000 pounds, somewhere around there. My truck cannot weigh itself over 9,000 pounds. Whatever I put in the bed can't weigh more than 9,000 pounds. I have my truck registered with combination plates. That's the key. So with the combination plates, my truck weighs nine or it's 9,000 GVW max. The trailer's 14,000 GVW max. So what's that? 23,000 GVW? 23,000 GVW. My combination plates, I set at 26,000 because over 26,000 is when you have to have a CDL. So I'm perfectly legal. Now, there's some other rules. With my truck, with that, with a 14,000 GVW, I have combination plates that allows me to go up to 26,000. I can't reach that. With the 23 is the max I can because that trailer can only be 14, the truck can only be 9. 
I could derate it. So you have to look at your your fees also. If there was something at twenty three thousand, which I think mine's at twenty two, so I just go to the max twenty six, so I could put another trailer on the back of my truck that is higher GVW, as long as I don't break that twenty six thousand. But then there's some other rules. So he told me today, which I didn't think, my dump trucks. I have two F650 dump trucks. They are 26,000 GVW trucks. So I figured I was right at the max, 26,000 GVW. And he said I can put a trailer on the hitch behind my dump trucks, which I thought if I hooked a trailer even empty behind my dump trucks, then I would be breaking that 26,000 GVW. Here's the rule. He said, I can put a trailer behind my dump truck, but it has to be 10,000 pounds or less. Here's where that CDL rule comes in. At 14,000, anything over 10,000 GVW on a trailer, they look at the truck and the trailer combined. So at that point, it's combined 26,000 if I put this trailer behind it that's illegal I need a CDL um, so now I'm over to 26,000 because that trailer is over 10,000 pounds it's 14 so they look at that they combine them now I'm illegal but if I had a trailer here which I don't that's 10,000 or less I could hook it behind my dump trailer or I'm sorry hook it behind my onto my dump truck and I would be legal, even though I'm 26,000 on the truck and 10,000 on the trailer, they look at them independently. They look at the truck by itself, they look at the trailer by itself. Now you can't exceed uh, your 26, uh, or actually, I think you can still put weight on that trailer, don't quote me. The 10,000, just don't exceed the 10,000 pound GVW. You can't, you know, have a excavator, not that mini excavator, but a skid steer or something on the trailer. Then you're gonna be overweight, but yeah, it's very confusing. Try to find this information somewhere. Good luck. Uh, but this this trooper today, very friendly, very helpful. I think he pulled me over because he thought I was overweight because my truck was sagging. And then, you know, he said I had a nice truck, nice trailer, looked at everything. I had a few, few issues. Um, some of them I knew about. Some, it's just this pickup truck I just got. I'm still converting everything over. It's still on temp. I got it registered, tags and, tags and title waiting on the official paperwork it's at the state and they're slow so with that being said we'll talk about the truck the truck has to have a fire extinguisher this is for commercial this doesn't matter if you're just a weekend warrior pulling a trailer around this is for like commercial stuff I run a business so these are things that I need if you're not running for hire you don't need all this stuff which doesn't really make sense to me because if it's for if I'm doing it for hire then I have to have a fire extinguisher but if I'm just hauling a trailer for myself the fire extinguisher is not needed like that's kind of BS but whatever um, so you have to have a fire extinguisher and it has to be secured my fire extinguishers I just leave on the floor in the back seat that would be a ticket it has to be secured so you don't have to have it necessarily bolted down but it needs to be strapped down and secured he said, you know, because if you're in an accident, you don't want that thing flying around hitting you in the head. Okay, whatever. I'll secure a fire extinguisher in here. I didn't have it in my truck today because I, you know, I sold my truck, my other pickup, got this pickup. It's in the garage. I haven't put it in this truck. Shame on me. Uh, triangles, you got to have the three triangle kit. That's got to be in here when you're running commercial. And you need to have your DOT numbers and your company name, two inch or bigger letters. Somewhere on the sides of the truck, visible from, he said, 50 feet away. So he gave me a good idea that I'm going to use. I don't really want to put decals on the side of this truck because it's too nice. I don't really want to put them on the windows. He said a guy, you have the stake beds on your bed rail. So I'm going to do this. Get your get your wood to go in your stake, in the stake um, pockets on the bed. Put the little sign on there and get your two inch DOT number, company name. You can stick it in the in the stake pocket. When you're not hauling for hire, you can pull them out, set them down. Uh, you don't. You only need it when you're hauling for hire. So I'm going to probably do that just because I don't want it visible all the time when I'm doing my own stuff. Because I use this truck for business and for personal use. So 
Yeah, I'm gonna take. I'm gonna adapt that and use the probably the stake pocket sign. He gave me the idea. I like it. So I don't have DOT numbers on this truck yet. It's on temp tag, so I don't know how that works. When I just got it swapped over, but I am hauling, so it is for hire. So technically, I'm probably in the wrong, but I'm always in the wrong. Here comes the rain. Some more weather. Perfect. So, anyways, probably gonna have to leave here soon. So we got these three trailers. They have to be inspected yearly, annually. They have to be inspected. It's a hundred dollars inspection per trailer. So more money for the state. And then, so the trailer I was hauling today broke on me, just got it fixed. I wasn't sure if I was going to keep it or not. Not inspected. I just got a ticket for it when it broke for not having it inspected, not by, by a local cop. So that's a hundred dollars a pop. And with a trailer over 10,000 pounds, you have to find a trailer inspection place, station, that has an inspector that can do trailers over 10,000 pounds. So I'm going to get in the truck because it's starting to snow and be crappy again. It's literally snowing right now, or freezing rain anyways, so that's always fun. Uh, I got guys on jobs. All right, so some more things I wanted to talk about with all this. Um, the truck, fire extinguisher, you have to have one. It has to be secured. So I got to put mine in here and strap it down. Triangles, I think it's a three triangle kit. You got to have it in the back. I got the tray. It probably needs to be secured too. I don't know. At least have it in there. Um, DOT physical you have to have your physical they're usually good for two years unless you have some sort of issue then there's an annual one but the physical you have to have a shrink shrunken down card and on you I had mine in my wallet so I was good there but you have to have it on you I don't that's their rule whatever um, DOT uh, if you're running commercial you got to have DOT physical for all commercial doesn't really matter the weights um, next thing he asked me about my my hitch he wanted to know what my hitch was rated at which I have a solid panel so it's rated at somewhere around 22 or 28 thousand pounds so I was good there um, I'm going to get a bigger one because I got this truck now it actually has an inch and a half hitch uh, receiver so I can get a, a larger panel bar and more heavy duty than the one that I had from my old truck which was the two inch and I got the adapter in here but we were good there um, he also asked about uh, well my chains so I had an issue with my chains my tra trailer was stuck in the field I pulled it out with my tractor I pulled the trailer out with my tractor by the chains so then I hooked my truck to it to get it going this morning I didn't cross the chains he said it's a law that you got to have your cha your safety chains crossed so of course I didn't have them crossed I don't know if he's docking me for everything or not but hopefully so I can give the state more money I love giving the state money um, the other thing I asked them was I've been just things people tell you uh, the safety chains have to have that spring-loaded clip on them that I've been told that it has to have those I asked him, he said no, doesn't matter if it has the safety um, closing clip or not, So, because this trailer doesn't. My other ones do, but the one that I was pulling today does not have that. Um, but I was good there other than they weren't crossed, they're supposed to be crossed, and usually 99% of the time mine are crossed except for today when I got stopped. Alright, next. Um, Covered the inspection. It's got to be inspection. Inspe your trailer has to be inspected annually. Uh, mine was not. Hopefully, I don't get ticketed for that because I already got a ticket for that. Um, okay. We'll talk about chaining down your load. Those were some questions I had for him. This is important too. Um, your machine that you're strapping down in your trailer. First off, if you have a dump trailer, it still has to be chained down. I think that's another reason he'd stop me. Not only because he thought like my, I looked like I was sagging and everything, but 
uh, he thought he was going to catch me with the skid steer not chained down because it was in a dump trailer. It has walls, but it still has to be secured in a dump trailer with chains like it would be on an open deck, deck over or flatbed trailer. But I was almost good there. He actually didn't say anything about it until I questioned and then he explained the correct way. Um, so really, it wasn't chained down correctly, but he didn't say anything about it till I asked about it. Um, but it wasn't going anywhere either. It's just state laws. Uh, if your machine is 10,000 pounds or less, it only has to have one chain or strap on the back and one chain or strap on the front. That is under 10,000 pounds. If your equipment weighs over 10,000 pounds, then you have to have a chain or a strap on all four corners to their own uh, own ring or wherever on the trailer, but they have to have their own anchor point. Okay, and it can be a strap. He said, "It can you can have a strap on the even over ten thousand pounds, but uh, chains would probably be better, of course." Um, then the other thing we discussed was any kind of hydraulic implement or an implement on the three points if you have a tractor the implement has to be secured separately so like today I had a skid steer backed on I take the chain from two D rings on the floor up over the bucket so it's over the bucket and then it goes through the middle uh, eyelet on the frame up front so it goes over the bucket through the frame, back over the bucket, and anchored down. Bucket's not going anywhere in an accident. Machine's not going anywhere in an accident. But that is not right. He said, the I'm fine to run it over there like that to the machine, but the bucket itself needs its own um, chain. And it's not allowed to be a strap in Pennsylvania. I think he said federally, you can strap it. Maybe in your state, you can. But uh, in Pennsylvania, he said a strap is not allowed on your implement or hydraulic uh, item on your machine, which is so weird to me. Like Even he doesn't agree with it. He said, you can strap the machine, but you can't strap the arm, which to me, the machine weighs more than my arm on my Mini. So it needs its own dedicated chain, not a strap but maybe in your state you can use a strap just use a chain and you're good covered regardless who knows but yeah so i need to have three so i can because on my mini excavator i told i told him too like i didn't ha keep anything back i had all kinds of questions for him i said i run the chain from the d-ring through the the bucket mount uh the way i position it it's lined up over in the corner i run the chain through the bucket mount so the bucket arm's secure to my anchor point on my machine on my mini excavator and then back to the other ring on the other side not going anywhere but that's not legal you got to have its own uh, dedicated chain and binder on the uh, mini arm so that covers strapping down your load so the next thing we talked about there's I'm gonna jump around a little bit here as it comes to my mind I, I bring it up uh, you should have your registrations and uh, insurance in your vehicle. If not, they can look it up, but it's good to have it in your vehicle. I don't have them right now, but each trailer has its own registration and insurance card. I need to put them all in my glove box so they're here because I pretty much only pull with this truck. But uh, I didn't have them all in there, but he can look them up in his system. Um, next... We talked about like hours and logbooks. He brought it up. I know a little bit about it from things I've seen before, but I didn't think I needed any kind of logbook or anything. Um, but I need something. So what he said is I don't need a logbook because I'm not... I'm doing local deliveries is how he put it. If you're doing local deliveries, which I think is... Don't quote me on this, but uh, he mentioned 150 miles. So I guess inside of 150 miles would be local deliveries or 
if you're, well, he explained it like this, you're returning to the same place that you started from. So if you're, I live near Pittsburgh, if I drive into Pittsburgh, spend the night down there, complete a job and come back, then I would need a log book. It doesn't have to do with CDL. I thought it was only for CDL drivers. It has to do with commercial driving, com commercial driving, not a commercial driver's license, but driving a vehicle commercially. So he said, if you're doing local deliveries like me, I'm just hauling gravel and dirt around here, or with this, I'm just hauling a piece of equipment to a job site to drop it off. Um, that's local delivery. I don't need a logbook. But I need, he said you need a time card. He said it, it can be real generic. You can have a piece of paper, write what time you started and what time you, and whenever you clock out, you put your clock out time on there. And that's pretty much all you need to get by with the show to local deliveries. Um, I'm not sure if you have to write a location on there. I don't think he said, he just said time, what time you start, what time you end. And you have to return to like the same place that you started but um that's local deliveries then you don't have to have a log book i'm not sure if that pertains to big cdl trucks or not but uh for me it does local deliveries um so what i actually have and i don't worry about it for me because i'm not really working i'm just dropping off a machine for my guys but i guess i am working but um for them, I have time cards already in the truck so they can write what time they start, what time they stop each day, and then total their hours so we can get them paid at the end of the week. So they're kind of already doing that. It's just, uh, it's only in the dump trucks. I don't have it in my pickup truck here, but I gotta, he just said, just write something down what time you started, and then when you're done, write down what time you stop, and uh, now they give you a 14 hour day. Uh, so you can do your deliveries for 14 hours from start to stop. It used to be 12. He said they upped it to 14 in the military. I know our duty day can exceed 16 hours and I work, uh, for the airlines, uh, maintenance. We can exceed 16 hours without, uh, approval from a uh, director of maintenance. So, but that's something different. Anyways, 14 hours. He said they give you now for duty day. Um, and then he brought up because I have three jobs that we were, you know, we were BSing and I was, so he was like, if you, cause I work night shift, 12 hour shifts. So he said, if I work a 12 hour shift night shift and I come home, I can't exceed that counts to my duty day until I get my eight hours rest. I, I can't hop in my truck. They don't want you driving anything fatigued, which Unfortunately, I drive fatigued all the time because I work 20 hours a day, but they frown upon that. Um, 14 hours, don't exceed it, and then you have to have 8 hours rest before you hop in the seat again. So that's what he explained to me. Write down your times. He said you can write them down on a piece of paper. It doesn't have to be anything official. Write them on a calendar. Just You have to have your start time, stop time and return to where you started from for local deliveries. And then you don't have to do a logbook. So I don't have to do a logbook, but I gotta record my times. So before I left, he was like, just write down your times on a piece of paper in your truck and then write down what time you stop. So I guess I'll have to do that from now on to be compliant, just another fun-filled thing to do. But what else? Another controversial, controversial issue I asked him about for clarity is tarping your load. Uh, people all over the internet have different opinions about whether or not you have to tarp your load. I've heard people say every load has to be tarped and then I see everybody not tarping their load but I asked him today and he said you only have to tarp your load if there is risk of something leaving your bed so we'll, or your trailer so we're gonna talk about dump trailers dump trucks if uh, you're hauling gravel you don't have to tarp your load he said you don't have to I asked him about firewood because firewood that could be questionable like he even said and I've seen it in other places that we have rules and regulations there's gray areas every place has these gray areas um, he said like that would be a gray area like firewood 
yeah, he said he wouldn't ticket somebody for not having uh, tarped over firewood unless if you have your firewood all the way up above the or two like right at the side walls, then there's then you might have to have it uh, tarped. But he said even if it's piled up in the middle and there's room on both sides, he wouldn't get you for not having it tarped. But you gotta watch because bark and stuff can blow out from your firewood. Um, but he said firewood doesn't really have to be tarped. Um, but if you're hauling garbage or something light, you got to throw a tarp over it. My new trailer has a tarp. My old one doesn't. But I'm starting to haul garbage with that as a dumpster service. So I might get a tarp for it. Worst case scenario, I can throw a tarp over it and strap it down to the uh, anchor points on the sides. Um, but your load doesn't have to be tarped unless things are at risk of coming out and he said firewood as long as you don't have it piled up over the walls uh, doesn't have to be tarped so that's that and I'm trying to think of what else we covered so much information and I had so many questions for him um, some of the CDL questions and that I think I covered most of the weights it's kind of confusing but I was always told anything over 10,000 GV over 10,000 GVW on the trailer, it's got to be. You can't pull it without CDL. That's not true. You can pull, and I was pulling today, no problem. But I had the combination plates, my truck in combination with a trailer, not to exceed 26,000 pounds. It's expensive. Uh, registrations somewhere between 550 and 600 dollars a year on this truck because my combination plates and my two dump trucks they're all registered at uh, 26,000 this one is a combination 26,000 so I was covered today with that but I didn't have my trailer inspected my chains weren't crossed my load I didn't have that third chain dedicated to the bucket but he didn't point that out I asked about it uh, think that covered everything um, but he just had a lot of good information I asked him all the things I could think about and um, there's a lot of information there I wanted to share it with you guys because I know everybody has questions about it everybody says something different that you talk to um, this was from a guy that does it every day for a living so he has a pretty good grasp of things um, but he was really nice gave me his number uh the bad thing is they seem like they know everybody in their area because he's like oh, i don't know you but i've heard your company before and uh he's like i'm surprised i don't know you and i was like yeah i like to try to keep it that way you know not that i'm really doing anything wrong all the time but just don't want to be on the dot inspector's radar but very nice guy very friendly uh some of them aren't but this guy was so I'm glad that I got stopped by him and he offered to come out to my place inspect all my trucks and trailers I think I said that already have my drivers there they can ask questions so we can go over everything he said he'd be more than happy to come do that um, as he, you know he gets paid to do whatever teach people um, you know he doesn't have to be out there writing tickets all the time he said he can come and hang out with me and talk to me about it all day long and he's uh well within reason but so that was cool i don't know if i'm gonna call him i might call him out and have him inspect my stuff whenever i get my new truck and everything's good to go but there's a lot lot to it especially once you have you know i got three trailers here truck two dump trucks it's a lot to keep up with uh paperwork wise they all have a registration. They all have an insurance card. The insurance card's like every six months. You got to swap. I'm really bad about, like when my mail comes in, it sits right on my desk. I'm really bad about putting it in the trucks and you got to get better with that. But a lot of information here. Um, hope this helps some of you and clarifies some things. If you have any other questions you could ask me, I might know a little bit about it, but probably not, or I could get in touch with him and ask him if it's something, or somebody in the comments might be educated, but 
again, you know, everybody has a different opinion about things, but it's not always right, so you got to watch. Thanks for watching. I think I covered everything. I covered most of it anyways. Um, please like and subscribe to my channel. I appreciate you. Bye.